Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining in this training module for the kindergarten through fifth grade engineering journeys. My name is Emily Fine and I am the director of program at Girl Scouts of Northeast Ohio. I'm excited to share this new journey with you today. The original presentation um, that uh, I am basing this off of was uh, given in August of 2017 by Suzanne Harper and she is the STEM Curriculum Specialist at Girl Scouts of the USA. So here's a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. First, I'll introduce you to the idea of design thinking. I'll go through the new STEM journey structure in the specific activities that girls will do on this journey. And I'll also show you where you can find all the resources for the journey on the volunteer toolkit, also known as the VTK. We'll talk about how to facilitate the program and inspire your girls to use the design thinking process. And then we'll go over some of the engineering badges, um, including robotics and mechanical engineering, uh, and um, to show you how those will link to this new journey. By the end of this training, uh, you'll understand the new STEM journey structure and content, the STEM badge structure and content, as well as how to facilitate an engineering program. So let's take a look and, uh, first and see what is design thinking. Here you go. I'm going to let you just look at this poster for a minute on the left. And this is available on the volunteer toolkit, the VTK, in the meeting aids section. You can print copies to take to your meeting as well. So there are two th key things to notice here. One, the design thinking activities are called design challenges and girls are presented with a need or a problem. They're asked to use their imaginations and work in teams to come up with possible solutions which they then test and redesign. Second, notice how the design thinking steps are almost exactly the same steps that the girls use when they take action. They see a need in their community, they brainstorm a way to address it, they test their ideas with others. For example, if they want to do a take action project for their school, they might talk to the principal or the school administrator to get feedback. They might redesign or tweak their idea based on that feedback. And of course, they share their solution. This journey includes talking points that make the connection between design thinking and take action. So what is a design challenge? Design challenges are not projects. When you do a project, you have a set of instructions. You follow the instructions to complete the project. For example, a project could be build a bridge. You follow the instructions and end up with a bridge. A design challenge could be come up with a way to cross a canyon. Girls can come up with any idea that solves the stated problem. There's a canyon. We have to get across it. They might build a bridge or they might decide to design a zip line that people to use across the canyon or they might build a model of a catapult that will launch people across the canyon. You get the idea. The goal is to let the girls use their imaginations and build a prototype of their idea. Their prototype can be a sketch, a rough model using common household items, or something more finished. Now let's take a quick look at the journey structure. So the new STEM journey structure and what girls will do on this journey is what we'll take a look at here. First, I want to give you some background on the new journey structure. Uh, GSUSA heard a lot of suggestions from volunteers about how the journeys could be made simpler and easier to use. They did extensive testing of this new structure to see if volunteers found it easier. The first version was created last summer and tested with a committee of council staff and some volunteers. They got great feedback, and based on that feedback, they created version 2. Version 2 was actually tested with 94 troops and over 1,000 girls. Again, they got great feedback on how to make it even simpler. They took the feedback and revised the journeys a third time, and that's how they developed the structure we're about to show to you. Just as another note, the outdoor journey is a little bit different because it's more badge based. For the outdoor journey, girls will do three outdoor badges and take action projects. If you keep it simple, when you think about what is a journey, journeys are where girls learn about a topic that they're interested in, and then they do a take action project to make the world a better place. So journeys are about learning something new and applying that knowledge through a take action project. We also need to make a pause here just to talk about the content partners for the engineering journey. Design Squad Global connects 
uh, 10 to 13 year old children from around the world, empowering them to collaborate to solve real world engineering problems and increase cross-cultural understanding. Design Squad Global was created by WGBH, a PBS station in Boston. The program has been piloted with groups of girls and boys in the United States and overseas. And those groups are called DSG troops, but we've adapted these materials for Girl Scout troops and are also calling them DSG troops. The Society of Women Engineers is a nonprofit educational and service organization that empowers women to succeed and advance in the field of engineering and to be recognized for their life-changing contributions as engineers and leaders. SWE is the driving force that establishes engineering as a highly desirable career for women through an exciting array of training and development programs, networking opportunities, scholarships, and outreach and advocacy activities. GSNEO has a relationship with a number of SWE organizations across Northeast Ohio. Here we go. Let's take a look now at the STEM journey design. Just a few things to note. If you're familiar with the original journeys, there are about 12 to 15 meetings. Now we have six. We had many activities and options in the original journeys, and we certainly heard from volunteers who liked having the choice, but many more volunteers said it was confusing. In addition, we had feedback that there was never enough time in troop meetings to use the meeting plans as written. So everything was trimmed down and tested to make sure that they worked. Now, as you can see, every meeting has four activity slots. The first three meetings focus on the STEM content, there's an As Girls Arrive activity that ties to the STEM theme, an opening ceremony where girls pledge the flag, recite the promise in law, conduct troop business, and are introduced to the STEM activity. Then they do the STEM activity followed by a closing ceremony. Each STEM activity takes 45 minutes or 30 minutes for daisies. The next two meetings have the same structure, but they're focused on the Girls Take Action project. And finally, there's the celebration meeting. These meetings were designed for the troop meeting model since it's the most common way that girls in kindergarten through fifth grade get together. However, it's a modular structure, so you can customize it to make it, uh, make it easier to deliver for you. For example, the three STEM meetings could be done in a day-long workshop or as part of a day camp. Some troops might want to have the meeting to celebrate their achievement and have an award ceremony, while others might want to use one of their meetings to celebrate something that they've accomplished. Well, what's most important is making sure that the girls learn about engineering, do a take action project, and of course, have fun. So let's take a look at the activities. The Daisy Design Challenges. So daisies take on challenges of making a fairy house, making a car powered by puffs of air, and crossing a canyon. Brownies take on the challenge of inventing helping hands or assistive devices. They design something uh, that will collect water and they face the challenge of making a catapult that will shoot a ping pong ball across the room and hit a target. Juniors build a structure out of paper that must be able to support a book. Then they build an emergency shelter. And finally, they create a structure that can withstand an earthquake. Last fall, we piloted the Think Like an Engineer journey to find out whether girls found the activities engaging, girls achieved the Girl Scout leadership experience outcomes, girls achieved STEM outcomes, volunteers found the activities easy to facilitate, volunteers felt the new journey structure was clear and worked well within the meeting. GSUSA got a lot of feedback. Representatives from 16 councils gave input as they were developing the pilot version of both the program and the evaluation. 10 councils organized pilots at the local level, 94 troops and 156 volunteers did the pilot and they got more than 1,000 girl surveys. Volunteers gave feedback on every single meeting in real time and it was enormously helpful. It meant that we could read the comments about what worked and what didn't as the girls were doing the journey and we could start making adjustments. 11 troops actually also videotaped the meetings, and by watching the videos, it added an extra dimension for GSUSA. They could see where girls were getting bored and where they were getting excited. So how do you teach design thinking? The trick is to answer questions with questions. When girls start building, they'll probably find that their prototype doesn't work exactly as they planned the first time they try. 
or even the second or the third. They might ask you what to do or how to fix it. Resist the urge to tell them how to solve the problem. Instead, ask them questions to help solve the problem. Just remember that there are no mistakes, oops, <laughs> no mistakes, and really no mistakes. Girl Scouts is able to provide a safe space for girls to learn and fail uh, with grace and try again. So we're really trying to build those resiliency skills. Here are some facilitation tips. Use the talking points, but make them your own. Some volunteers find it helpful to follow the script. Others deliver the information in their own words. Either way is just fine. Be prepared. It's what Girl Scouts do. Each meeting includes a prepare ahead section that includes a materials list and what kind of setup is required. Read it in advance so you have enough time to gather supplies and enlist help if needed. Use the three processes. Learning by doing and cooperative learning are built into this journey. Thanks to the hands-on activities and tips, you'll also find specific Keep It Girl-Led tips in the meeting plans to help you create a girl-led experience. Fail fast and succeed sooner. That's how engineers solve problems. They come up with possible solutions, design prototypes, and test them to see what works and what doesn't. To engineers, failure is a good thing. Every time a design fails, you learn something about how to make it better. You can help girls think this way. When a prototype doesn't work, say something like, why do you think it didn't work? How could you change your design? Try again. That's what engineers do. This approach also keeps the activity girl-led and fun because girls are free to invent things without feeling the pressure of making them perfect. Leave time for the closing ceremony. If girls are having fun doing a design challenge, you might be tempted to skip the closing ceremony so they can keep going. But the closing ceremony is absolutely key to their learning. And here's why. When girls leave the meeting, they'll remember how much fun they had, but they might not realize that what they just learned is how engineers solve problems and that they're good at engineering unless you tell them. The closing ceremony is where you can connect the dots for girls by pointing out how they acted as engineers, how much fun they had solving problems with engineering, that they have what it takes to continue exploring STEM. Please share your troop story. As a Girl Scout leader, you're designing experiences that girls will remember their whole lives. Try to capture those memories with photos or videos. Girls love remembering all that they did, and it's a great way for parents to see the benefits of Girl Scouting. Please also feel free to share them with Girl Scouts of the USA. You can send them an email at stem at girlscouts.org, or you can send them to GSNEO at marketing at girlscouts.gsneo at gsneo.org. Program pairing. When possible, we've listed badges that pair well with each journey. And here are the suggested program pairings for Think Like an Engineer. The daisies might consider the rosy and the clover petals. The brownies might think about the inventor badge. And the juniors might look at the product designer badge. If you have other pairings that work well, please share and let us know. Let's take a look now at the volunteer toolkit. So what uh, design challenges will girls do on the journey? Let's take a little bit of a closer look. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a list of all the materials that have been created to support this journey. On the right, you'll see a screenshot of where they're located. You'll have detailed activity plans for each meeting, checklists, facilitation tips, handouts that go with each meeting, a glossary, a take action guide, and a materials list, both a list for each meeting and, if you're like me, a list of all the materials you need for all six meetings in case you like to pull them together all at once. This is what the v why the VTK is a useful tool. If you go here, you'll know that you have all the resources that you need. The activity plans are great for step-by-step -step instructions, but some of the handouts you need are actually in the meeting aids section. So let's take a closer look now at the meeting aids section. You can see that you have some standard aids like the Promise and Law, uh, which is especially useful for new volunteers, you have a glossary and a material list. There is a document called Brainstorming Tips, Think, Pair, Share, and that's a great handout with facilitation tips um, that was created by uh, council staff in Northeast Texas. And pay attention to the Take Action Guide. This is something that we've heard loud and clear from volunteers. Help me understand the difference between community service and take action and what it means to make a project sustainable. 
Can you give me some examples of what take action projects are? My girls want to come up with their own project, but they need help getting started. You get all of that in the take action guide, so check it out. It's a really great tool. And finally, notice the, uh, the meeting aids in blue, uh, in blue and green. These handouts are used in meeting three of the junior journey, and you'll need them to facilitate the meeting. GSUSA is really taking feedback seriously. They've tested and revised the journeys to address feedback from girls and volunteers, and they've created new meeting aids based on volunteer requests. If they hear that there's a need for a new meeting aid, they can create it and add it to the VTK. And that's another reason to use this online tool. So there's another way that GSUSA is asking for feedback from both girls and volunteers. At the end of each program, there'll be a link to a survey for girls and for volunteers. The girls survey helps measure how well the program is working. If girls are bored or not, if they're achieving the pro attended program outcomes, then we have work to do. So we need to revise the program. We know that it takes time for girls to fill out a survey and that it can be challenging to get a room full of girls to do this. But if you can, it would be greatly appreciated because it will help us improve the program, which will benefit the movement and most importantly, benefit the girls. We'd also like the volunteers to complete the volunteer survey which you can find at the end of the meeting activity plan for meeting six. By using the VTK, you can reach GSUSA directly and make your voice heard. Okay, so we've given you lots of reasons to use the VTK, but we know not everyone can access the online site. So there are PDFs available of all the program materials and our council does have them available. You can contact customer care if needed. But again, if you have access to the VTK, I do recommend that you use it. These tools are really designed to be used on the VTK, so the information and the meeting aids come as you need it and not all in one stack, which can be a little bit overwhelming. So let's take a look quickly at the robotics and the mechanical engineering badges. So the robotics badges were tested with both girls and volunteers. And the volunteers um, reactions to the robotics program, they said, one girl said at the beginning, I don't like any of this stuff and I don't want to do it. And by the end, they couldn't pull her away. The, another volunteer said that girls were asking, can you send me the links for this so that I can do it at home too? And the, the, the volunteers uh, commented about facilitating the program that they thought they'd had to be more prepared because they didn't know much about robotics. But once they got into it, they realized that they knew more than they thought. They said it was nice having the things to say. It was good to communicate all these complex things to girls. And one woman said, I expected my girls to get out of their com comfort zone, so why shouldn't I do it too? So uh, here's a little bit of FAQs about the robotics badges. <clears throat> the information needed to facilitate these badges is on the VTK. And robotics badge booklets offer a fun way to learn more about robots. They're not designed to be volunteer guides. These are considered beginner badges. They've been, de been designed for girls and volunteers who want to get started with robotics. However, if your troop has a robotics experience and wants to earn these badges, feel free to add more difficulty to reach the requirements. The badge activities are as much as possible unplugged. They've been designed so that girls who don't have the resources to buy robotics kits can learn something about robotics basics. However, if you have access to robotics kits, that's great. Go ahead and use them. If you have robotics expertise and want to offer suggestions for the next level of robotics badges, uh, please send your ideas to stem at girlscouts.org. Okay, and the mechanical engineering badges. So you'll see there's three uh, me mechanical engineering badges for the daisies and three mechanical engineering badges for the brownies. And these were actually designed to go with uh, a national partnership with Goldie Blocks. Um, and Goldie Blocks kits are available online to help complete these badges uh, in the Girl Scout shop. The kits are $99, uh, they're reusable, and they serve 12 girls. Um, and so, the, the thought behind this is that if you purchase the kit, you just open it up and go, uh, that leaders won't have to uh, run around town to purchase a bunch of supplies. It is possible to do them without the kits. However, um, you know, at a price with less than $10 a girl, uh, the, the kits actually are an economical way to go. Our suggestion might be to partner with another troop because the kits are reusable. Um, so maybe you could go together to purchase the kits, which would even lower the price per girl, 
or maybe the service units might consider purchasing a kit that then they would loan out to area troops um, to work on these badges. So as we think about the new STEM badges, we just want to remind everyone to be a sister to, to every Girl Scout that everyone is a beginner at something and that everyone is an expert at something. And so while some people might be great at engineering, other people have great camping skills and that when we pool our resources together, we're able to provide really amazing experiences with girls. So uh, let's work together to share what we know so that we can provide the best opportunities for girls here in Northeast Ohio. And I guess I want to share you with this final idea uh, as we think about engineering. So in the engineering process, we come up with an idea, we try it, and we either succeed or we learn something. And I think that gets to the essence of what this journey is trying to do, um, teach girls, that um, we can learn from our mistakes and that making mistakes uh, can be a great opportunity for us. So with that, I want to say thank you for joining me on this quick module about the uh, I'm sorry, this should say the Think Like an Engineering Journey. If you have questions, you can give me, uh, send me an email uh, at efine at gsneo.org. Thanks so much and have a great day.